The year is 2004. A small group of researchers set out aboard the Vidar Viking drill ship to pull up sediment cores from the Lomonosov Ridge, located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. They embarked on this journey to learn about the history of biogenic sedimentation and sea ice in the Arctic Ocean, but nothing could have prepared them for what they found. At first, the sediment cores looked normal. You have soft, silty clays, isolated stones dropped by sea ice, more clay, and then 50 million years ago in the Middle Eocene, you have Azola. A ton of Azola. But what's so interesting about that? Well, Azola is a freshwater fern, and this is the middle of the Arctic Ocean. So what on earth happened? Let's take a look at our evidence. The Azola layer has a very low occurrence of terrestrial spores or pollen, so that rules out the possibility that Azola grew on land and was swept out to sea. The layer's thickness suggests the so-called Azola event lasted 800,000 years. This wasn't a one-off thing. Further, the annual Azola layers alternate with layers of diatoms known to come from a brackish environment. Well, that just made things more complicated. Let's take a look at a plate tectonic reconstruction from 50 million years ago. As you can see, the Arctic Ocean has terrible circulation with the rest of the world's oceans. It's blocked off from the Pacific by the Bering Land Bridge, and there are really only two outlets of water. So, what happened? It seems that every year, as precipitation increased in the summer, the Arctic Ocean received freshwater runoff from the surrounding continents. Since freshwater is less dense than salt water, it floats on top, creating a layer perfect for Azola growth. Know what else is perfect for Azola growth? The especially long photo period of the Arctic summer. It's easy to grow when the sun never sets. In fact, Azola grows extremely fast, doubling its mass in a period of as little as two days. And with fast growth comes high productivity. Through photosynthesis, this fern snatches massive amounts of carbon out of the atmosphere and, when the brackish water conditions return and kill them, they take all the carbon with them to bury at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. But why am I telling you about this? Well, have a look at this graph of estimated global temperatures throughout the Xenozoic era. Now take a look at the timing of the Azola event. That's right, it's hypothesized that massive amounts of Azola growing in the middle of the Arctic Ocean 50 million years ago contributed to a 55 to 470 parts per million drawdown of atmospheric carbon dioxide that ultimately led to the Antarctic glaciation 35 million years ago. That begs the question, can Azola do it again? Research has found that this plant can sequester 18 times as much carbon as the Amazon rainforest in the same area, and the Amazon is already one of the biggest carbon sinks on Earth. An area roughly one-fifth its size, filled with Azola, would completely offset annual human carbon emissions. There is a lot we can learn from the fossil record, even from unsuspecting water ferns. Azola has changed the prehistoric world once before, and it might be what saves the modern world. Thanks for watching.